Did you see it? Did you? You give up? I changed the channel name. <laughs> I'll explain in detail in a future video, but for now, I'll just say that I want the focus of this channel to be around helping you make magic happen in a garage setting. I want to motivate people to not be afraid to tackle big projects, even if they're in a little space. If you're just joining, I'm Aaron with Man Candy Creations, and we're currently building a Mitsubishi Mighty Max using Mitsubishi Eclipse parts. And today, we're installing the radiator and condenser. Welcome to Garage Fab. I know, I don't have a new intro yet. Give me a minute. The majority of this Mighty Max project is going to be using exclusively Mitsubishi Eclipse parts. And when it comes to taking parts from other vehicles for my projects, uh, this is definitely going to be in my wheelhouse. For as long as I can remember, I have preferred to steal parts from production vehicles uh, for several reasons, really. One, money, because parts are a lot cheaper from the junkyard. Two, if it's done right, you're not really going to notice the difference anyways. There's no doubt that me choosing to use a TIG welded aluminum radiator would look a million times better than the radiator that I'm about to use, but at what cost? The truth is, parts break. Nothing lasts forever, and when they break, they need to be replaced. Now if I get a TIG welded aluminum radiator, perhaps a universal size, will I be able to find that same universal radiator in the future? Will that company even be around? Will another company's universal radiator fit in the brackets that I've already made? I'm kind of lazy, I don't want to do the work more than once. By using a Mitsubishi Eclipse radiator, it should be extremely easy to find myself a new radiator. All I need to do is go to Mitsubishi or Pet Boys or O'Reilly's and get a new Mitsubishi Eclipse radiator. And even if any one of those companies goes down, the chances are somebody else is going to make a Mitsubishi Eclipse radiator. No matter what, I'm always going to have a radiator that I can just bolt into the brackets that I've already made. Then it comes down to the parts effectiveness. How do I find a radiator that's going to fit my application perfectly and work the way I want it to? How do I know if the radiator I pick is going to work well with a Mitsubishi Eclipse turbo motor? Hmm. I wonder if a Mitsubishi Eclipse radiator would work well with a Mitsubishi Eclipse turbo motor. I think it's safe to assume. And by choosing this radiator, I've already got the electric fans that go with it, along with the fan shrouds and the bracketry to attach everything together. And again, if one of these fans goes out, all I gotta do is go to the auto parts store and get myself another fan. This is gonna be a recurring theme constantly in this build. I'm using the entire AC and heating system from the Eclipse. I could get a complete unit from Vintage Air, but if something goes wrong with that unit, will Vintage Air be around? AccuAir's gone. What happened there? If my evaporator starts leaking or my heater core, all I gotta do is get a Mitsubishi Eclipse part and replace it. So that's my argument for junkyard parts. Uh, I'm bored with that. Let's do some work. You may have noticed I've already got the radiator somewhat set in place. Uh, the radiator is a great size for this. It looks like it's going to be a very simple install. For the most part, it's just going to be making brackets to mount it in uh, with a couple little issues. One, the radiator is already centered and the radiator is touching the battery tray. So I'm going to trim the battery tray out a little bit to make sure nothing is rubbing. The battery tray is likely going to get completely cut out when I do the inner fender wells, but I'm not there yet. so. I don't want to mess anything up in case I decide to keep the tray. So right now I'm just going to remove just a little bit just to make sure I can get the radiator done. Second, there's this little intake over here for the fresh air for the original air filter housing that was up here. There used to be some ducting that went to this. This is causing the radiator to not be able to sit flush against the radiator support. So I'm going to cut that out. Lastly, there's a lot of radiator material that's getting blocked by the Mighty Max radiator support. So I'm just going to cut a decent amount of this out. And then lastly is simply making the mounts, which shouldn't be too hard either. So I think this is going to be very straightforward. The Mitsubishi Eclipse radiator mounts using these dinguses. 
Where's that ding guy? Anyways, there's two studs on the top, two studs on the bottom. And these are some of the many parts that I saved from the Eclipse. These are the top brackets, and these are donuts from the bottom. The bottom donut just sits in a hole in the bottom of the radiator support in the Eclipse body. I decided to start with the top mounts to determine the height of the radiator, and then from there I'll determine where the bottom mount should go. But first, I need to make some adjustments to the Eclipse mount. I've decided to use this edge on the radiator support of the Mighty Max because it's nice and firm and it's about the right height that I need it to go. The problem is the Eclipse mount has a slight angle to it, which the Mighty Max does not have. So I need to get rid of this angle. I've already done one. Basically all I did was pie cut the edge, bend it back up to get rid of this angle. Now the top of the radiator section is parallel to the Mighty Max radiator support angle. Also I want the radiator support to fit within this contour nicely. So what I did was cut the majority of it off and then add that contour so that it fits nicely in that little curve. Now I can mount these a few different ways. I could weld them on, but I need to be able to remove these to change the radiator out in the future, so I can't weld it. I could use self-tapping screws. Super easy, but they suck. Don't use self-tapping screws. Self-tapping screws are eventually gonna pull out. You could also just tap the holes that you drill into the sheet metal, but sheet metal is thin and those threads will likely pull out. So the best bet for sheet metal is rivnuts. This allows you to install threads into a sheet metal surface. Rivnuts are very similar to pop rivets and they use a similar tool. Once you put the rivnut in a snug hole and squeeze the tool, the bottom of the rivnut gets really big so that it can't pull back out of the hole and you have threads. If you need to attach something to sheet metal and make it removable, rivnuts are about as strong as you're going to get. I'm making for the bottom are stupid simple. The rubber donuts are an inch and a half so I'm using inch and a half square tubing. I cut them at a 45 degree angle because angles are cooler than non-angles. The lower radiator studs need to be held at two inches away from the core support so the radiator doesn't rub. The rubber donuts require a three-quarter ish hole and are tapered so I beveled the hole so that sharp edges won't cut through the rubber. Okay, the top mounts are done. I just need to do the bottom mounts, and originally I was just gonna use some math to determine where to put the bottom mounts, but I hate math, and math hates me. The bottom studs are not directly below the top mounts as I had hoped. They're actually set in a little bit, and they're not even set in an equal amount. So I've decided instead to not math. I'm just gonna hold the mounts in place with the radiator shimmed where it needs to be, Tack weld them in, remove the radiator, and then finish welding. I just need to weld up those cuts I made in the upper mount brackets, remove some metal from the core support, and we'll call the radiator install done. Clips condenser fits surprisingly well in the Mighty Max. Amazingly well. There's even a hole in the core support for the lines to go through. Unfortunately, this hole is not for that. That hole is for some brackets for the bumper, and we're still gonna need a bumper. So I can't take up too much space in this hole. 
Uh, and it seems like the condenser should go up quite a bit. So I'm actually gonna open up this hole just a little bit. It almost looks like I may be able to utilize some of the metal from the core support for the upper mounts. And for the bottom mounts, I'm thinking I'll take the same design from the radiator and just do that again on the outside. I'm gonna start by opening up this hole and taking a second look. So I've opened up this hole so that I can move the condenser up a little bit and man I know I keep saying it but I am stoked at how well this condenser fits. Oh, it's almost like it's made for it. See it's got some it's got some mounts at the top that are kind of at a 45 degree angle but those could almost bolt up to the existing metal on the Mighty Max. I'm going to try to cut these and twist them so that they're vertical and I might be able to just drill some holes and mount them directly to the top. And if I can do that, making some mounts for the bottom, it's gonna be so easy. Oh man, it's another good day. I could not be happier with how twisting those brackets worked out. I was hoping it was going to work. I did not expect it to be that easy. I'm running out of light and more importantly, it's getting to be about time to stop making noise. So I got to pack it in for the night. So I'm just going to put the vertical support back on. So tomorrow when I make the lower brackets, I know that I'm not going to actually hit the support. I was almost able to get the radiator and the condenser in in one day. That is, that is awesome. Very happy. The lower condenser mounts are basically a repeat of the radiator mounts. Same inch and a half tubing, but with 5 8 tapered holes. I cut the tubing long enough to push the condenser away from the core support again, but this time included some extra material so I could contour the back of the mounts to match the shape of the mating surface. I'm avoiding the mass again and just eyeballed the shapes of the mating surface and trimmed the mounts until they fit. Then just before welding them on, I cut the ends off at an angle again because angles are still awesome. Well guys, that wraps it up for the radiator and condenser install, and man, am I in a good mood. It is rare that things go that smoothly. If you've got an extra Eclipse laying around, I highly recommend giving that a try. Let me know what you thought, guys, and more importantly, I've got a lot to do on this truck. Let me know if there's something in particular that you want to see. I still haven't heard back from STM Tuned about the piston rings that I need to exchange. 
I'm not going to give them too much of a hard time because they said they're extremely busy lately. But the engine rebuild is going to have to be put off just a little bit more. It's looking like I'm just going to have to pony up some more money to get the piston rings I need so that I can finish the rebuild. It's going to be to the point soon where I need that motor to do anything else. Thanks again for watching, guys. Until next time, keep moving forward. I wonder if the AC is cold yet. <laughs>